So here's a problem that a lot of us run into. I bought this motor for $15, and it's a good deal because it's a strong three-quarter horse motor and it runs great. Now, it's got a pulley on the shaft, but the pulley's broken. Now, I could buy a pulley for this, but new pulleys are really expensive. I think they're too expensive for what you get, so I'd rather make it. And then, I'm also building this lathe. It's a multi-part video, so if you haven't seen part one, you might want to catch up on it. To turn the spindle and to get the different speeds that I want, I want a four-section step pulley to go right here between the bearings. And I can use this setup to make the pulley, except even once I have a pulley on my motor, I still need to get this spindle turning if I'm gonna use it to make pulleys. And how am I gonna turn the spindle when there's no pulley on it to begin with? There's no way to get the force from the motor to the shaft. So I want to use this lathe to make its own pulleys, but without having any pulleys to start with. And that should be an interesting technical challenge. Or a time-wasting disaster. It could really go either way. To get started on your pulleys, cut up some small pieces of cabinet-grade plywood. Cabinet grade. I really don't think you want to use whatever random junk you have laying around your shop. If you don't have high quality plywood sitting around, I recommend using a close grained hardwood, like rock maple or beech. They should work just fine. Then find the center of each of your pieces and drill out a small hole on the drill press. Lay out your circles with a compass based on whatever size pulleys you need. Now for each of my pulleys, I add a half an inch to the diameter. That's going to give me a little bit of wiggle room during turning. So if I make a tiny mistake, it's not going to be a catastrophe. You can rough out your circles with a bandsaw or a jigsaw, but be really careful to stay outside of your lines. For glue up, I just used regular tight bond, and it's plenty strong enough for this application. To keep everything lined up, I pushed a drill bit through those little holes I drilled earlier on. And that keeps everything aligned. But I also wax the drill bit and yank it out as soon as everything is clamped down. That way, it can't get stuck after the glue dries. Once all my assemblies are clamped up, I let them dry overnight for maximum hardness. Now that I've got some good pulley blanks prepared, it's time to turn the actual pulleys. So I've got to start worrying about concentricity, which I know, that's a big word. But all it means is that the center of your pulley and the center of your shaft have to be in exactly the same place. If they're off by even a tiny bit, you're going to get wobble and vibration that's very dangerous in a high RPM tool. Luckily, there's a really easy way to end up with a concentric part, which is just to turn it on whatever shaft it's going to live on. So, for instance, with this motor, I'm going to put the pulley blank on the shaft and then just turn it right there. And that's going to guarantee that I have a concentric pulley when I'm all done. Now, this pulley is 5 eighths of an inch in diameter, and that's a really common size and easy to drill. But I don't want a regular fit, I want a really tight press fit that's just going to hold the pulley better. So I take an old spade bit that I don't use very much, and I just take a couple passes on the grinder to make it a tiny, tiny bit narrower. We're really just taking off a little bit of metal here. Then when I drill the hole, it's quite a tight fit, and I have to tap the pulley blank on with a mallet. Now, the old broken pulley also came with a key, a tiny little piece of metal that fits in there to keep the pulley and the shaft locked together. And even though the pulley was broken, the key is salvageable, so I'm going to keep that. I cut a little slot into the pulley blank with the jigsaw, and then as soon as the pulley is on the shaft, I tap that key in with a hammer. And everything's got a really tight, solid fit. I'm not going to have to worry about it moving. Turning pulleys is time consuming, and you need to be careful, but it's not very difficult. The first thing is to stabilize the motor to the bench. Clamp it down, and then maybe add some blocks of wood around it so it can't walk no matter what happens. Then you need to add a temporary tool rest. I'm just going to use standard bench chisels here because if you don't already have a lathe, you might not have any turning tools, and bench chisels work fine for this. I'll start with a big old framing chisel and just true up the cylinder. Then I'll turn the motor off and lay out my pulley. I'm getting my layout lines using a real pulley that I happen to have sitting around, but if you don't have any pulleys, just go online and look up the specs for a half-inch V-belt pulley. Common information, very easy to find, and you can do the layout just as quickly and easily as I'm doing here. You're going to turn the pulley in two stages. The first stage is getting the central internal diameter correct, and that's really easy with a narrow bench chisel and a set of calipers. Just turn down until you've got the right diameter, and you're done. 
then you need to slope the sides. And this is the really important part because a V-belt transmits all of its force by the sides of the belt touching the sides of the pulley. It shouldn't bottom out in the middle of the pulley and the center of the belt shouldn't touch the pulley anywhere. All the action is on those sloped sides, so you need to get them correct. To make that easier, I grab a V-belt, turn it inside out, and use that to check the fit as I go. As you get into it, the process becomes very simple. Turn a little, jam the belt in and check the fit. Turn a little more, check the fit. Once I'm happy with the shape and fit of the pulley, I put on a couple relatively heavy coats of wipe-on polyurethane. That's just going to stabilize the wood, soak into the end grain, and should make the pulley stand up to wear better. You can also paint them if you want. Doesn't make a lot of difference. So this project is moving right along. Here's my lathe headstock, and you can see that I've mounted the cone pulley that you saw me make earlier in the video. The process of getting the cone pulley onto this 3 quarter inch shaft was exactly the same. I got a 3 quarter inch spade bit, ground it down a little bit, drilled the hole for a nice tight fit, and pounded it on. Then I realized that this shaft doesn't have a keyway in it, and I don't have any more spare keys laying around, and a tight friction fit, that's not going to be enough. I wasn't sure what to do about that until I started looking more at my commercially made pulleys, and the ones that have a hub also have a set screw on the hub. And I thought, oh, I could do that. So I just added two additional pieces of plywood on each end to act as hubs, drilled them out, and ran in regular wood screws that I had ground the point off of. And I think these are going to work really well to keep this set in place, especially with the tight friction fit that I got from drilling the hole a little bit undersized. So now I'm back to my original problem. I'm ready to turn this pulley up here. I've got my motor just outside of frame, and I can set the belt in the pulley that I just turned and run it up here, but then there's nothing to use to turn the shaft. And I have a couple pulleys around, but they're all 5 8 and this shaft is 3 quarters. A lot of my viewers aren't going to have spare pulleys sitting around anyway, so my using this solution isn't going to help anybody else. Now, you might think to yourself, Rex, turn a pulley on the motor shaft, take it off, and put it on this shaft. That would be a brilliant solution, except the motor shaft is 5 8 and this is 3 quarters. If I turn a pulley on that, then I have to drill it out. If I drill it out, I'm going to ruin my concentricity, and I'm not going to have a good running pulley. So I need a different solution. Luckily, I've got one. I started with a piece of hardwood, a thin one, about a quarter of an inch. I cut a little circle out of that, and then I cut out two circles of just the crappiest thin plywood I have in the shop. I cut those circles on the bandsaw with the table tilted at 45 degrees. So, when I glue the whole thing together, what I end up with is something vaguely V-pulley shaped. Now, the angle of the V isn't great, and the pulley's thin, and it's a little bit fragile, but it only has to turn long enough for me to get this stuff squared away, and I think it's going to last long enough for that. So I'm going to tap this pulley onto the shaft. I'm not going to key it or put a set screw in. I've got a very tight fit, and I think that's going to work for the short amount of turning that I need to do. Okay, let's test it. Now that I know my temporary pulley works, I'm going to turn the smallest step on my cone pulley. Then I'm going to move my motor, reset it up for a new angle, and use that smallest pulley to turn the rest of them. While I'm at it, I'll also true up those set screw hubs and make sure everything's running as true and vibration-free as possible. So I am super excited at the way this project is moving along. I've got a double pulley on my motor shaft over here and a four-step cone pulley on the headstock of my lathe. And between the two of these things, I'm going to build a mechanism that's going to let me get eight different speeds out of this single-speed motor with no rewiring and no electrical nonsense. And the video where I do that is going to be available next Monday. Or, if you'd like to go over to patreon.com slash rexkruger and sign on to support this channel, you can get access to that and all of my other videos three days early. You can also get blog posts, book reviews, exclusive videos, tool giveaways, discounts on merchandise. Oh, wait a second, merchandise! I've got t-shirts! I've got three unique designs, 100% cotton, sewn and printed in the USA. They're $25 for most sizes, including shipping to the lower 48 states. So, if you're not ready to become a patron yet, I totally understand. But think about going over to rexkruger.com slash store and picking up a t-shirt. They're nice, high-quality shirts at a fair price, made by people who get paid a fair wage. And when you pick one up, you help support this content. 
You help me do more, better videos and get them out on a schedule. And I really appreciate that. And even if you can't support the channel in any of these monetary ways, I'm just really glad that we can all be here doing this stuff together. Thanks for watching.